Welcome to the Podcast Digest, the podcast dedicated to helping you find the best shows worthy of your subscription, as well as conversations with their creators. And now, your host, Dan Lazette. Hello folks, welcome back to the Podcast Digest. Thank you once again for taking the time to join me this week. In fact, this week I'm bringing back the original format. Not an interview this time, but rather it's time to recommend some more great podcasts to you guys. But since I haven't brought you one of these in a, in a good bit, I decided it was time to call in some help. And what better person to co-host this review episode than a guy who also does awesome podcast reviews of the written style, I've got Diamond Dave Meyer from the Cool Story Show podcast, thecoolstoryshow.com, and also the host of his brand new show, Podcast Without Borders, is joining me on the recommendation train this week. Dave, welcome back to the Podcast Digest. Thank you for having me back, Dan. I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be good times. It's going to be good. I know I've been receiving a lot of feedback from folks who are saying, hey, the interviews are great. We're really enjoying them, but can you recommend some more shows? And so I've got a nice little built-up library of recommendations, and I know you also like to do the same type of thing in the written method over at thecoolstoryshow.com. So I figured we could join forces and give everybody what they're looking for. It's a podcast superhero team of awesome. That's right. And we're going to tell some folks about some of the great stuff out there that they're probably not listening to but should be. But just like I'm calling this episode original format, we're going to bring back my original discussion section. Except this time, Dave and I are going to talk about it. And rather than me talking about it by myself, it's about what I call my listener pro tip section. And we are going to talk about a subject that's been in the news here in the podcast news space in recent weeks. And that is about listening speed. Well, how did this come back in the news? Anybody who listens to podcasts probably has seen that slider or dial or button in their podcast app of choice that can change the listening speed. Well, it came back to the forefront because one of the biggest tech websites in the world, The Verge, wrote an article uh, a couple of days back, uh, maybe a couple of weeks by the time you're hearing this, that was entitled Stop Listening to Podcasts at 1.5x. This was an article written by John Lago Marcino, hopefully I'm saying that right, that sort of took the podcasting world by storm in the sense and uh, basically to summarize what this article is saying is that he talks about that content creators podcast hosts didn't or don't intend for listeners to listen to their podcasts at a speed higher than normal at a speed higher than 1.0 x and um I thought this would be an interesting conversation to talk with you about, Dave. You are also a podcast creator. In fact, now you've got two podcasts, and I know that you've reviewed this article as well. What are your thoughts on the subject of what you would prefer or like listeners to listen to your shows at? Uh, well, I, I guess when it comes to listeners, it, it really comes down to what they, they choose to listen it to. I mean, I'm not making podcasts for... Uh, you know, the 1.5 crowd, to be honest, I, I just kind of record and we just go with whatever comes out. But what I think is interesting is how both sides of these articles kind of go left and right. Um, the guy at The Verge, John, um, argues that, you know, this kind of like music or art ruins a podcast because it should be listened to as it's recorded so you can appreciate it fully. Uh, and actually what I liked about him is he used examples. The other, the other guy, um, sorry, I think his name was Marco or Marco.org, he didn't use anything. He just argued that, you know, you, you should listen to him at 1.5 because it makes it easier. And I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, I tried before this listening to a, a show in 1.5 and it, it was just hard. You know what I mean? Like it was, you, I personally couldn't listen to it because it was too fast. Right, and the other article you refer to is from Marco Arment, big tech guy. He's an iOS developer and actually designed and released and produced and manufactured, whatever the term would be, one of the largest uh, podcast listening applications for iOS called Overcast. In fact, The Verge talks about Overcast frequently throughout their article that we're referring to. And folks, links to both of these articles, The Verge article, as well as Marco Arment's response, if you will, from his blog, Marco.org, are linked in the show notes if you want to read these to kind of get the context of what we're talking about. And The Verge sort of called out Marco to a degree saying that 
if anybody is an I- listening to this on iOS, and if you're a podcast fan like we are, you've probably heard of Overcast. And if you haven't, it's a great app and worth checking out. And its biggest differentiating, differentiating feature um, are two, but the one we're really talking about is something called Smart Speed. So Marco redid the whole audio engine in iOS and put this into his application. And the idea behind it was it it is a variable speed rate, right? So it's not like your standard moving to 1.2, 1.5, 2.0x, but rather what it does is actually take the silences that are already in podcasts like this one, and it would trim that out. It would actually cut that down and make it faster and intelligently analyze the audio to trim that back. And The Verge says that when you're listening at 1.5x or you're using something like Smart Speed, or worse, those two things in conjunction, which you can do in the Overcast app, that you could be uh, not necessarily receiving the intention of the creator, of the artist, especially when you're talking about a dramatic show, uh, radio dramas, they use examples from This American Life uh, and Serial, and they say that you basically will lose the intent. And they they kind of, like you, you talked about, Dave, they actually give you sound clips of sort of the before and after, the application of things like that. My personal opinion for the Podcast Digest is, if you're listening, I'm happy. You can listen at whatever speed that you want. But as a listener myself, I have tried the 1.2, 1.5x. I have Overcast. I've uploaded all my subscriptions to Overcast. I've tried to do Smart Speed. But it just sounds too weird. What, what You said you tried it, Dave. What does it sound like to you? It... It, it sounds like a bunch of people talking really, really fast. And like I said, I, I had to focus more intently on it instead of casual listening because you're trying to pick up, obviously, more of the audio coming at you quickly. Um, like I said, I, I really didn't like it. I'm the same way. It, it just didn't sound right. Now, I'll give Marco kudos in the sense that I think smart speed handles it better because technically when someone's speaking, it's not changing the speed rate just the pauses or the silences but even so it just sounded too fast like in the conversation you and I are having right now Dave there is a back and forth there is a rhythm there is pauses there are reactions and I think using smart speed you can lose something like that yeah exactly and I haven't tried smart speed to be honest, so I'm not too sure how it would sound without the gaps to kind of trim it down. But I'd I'd be curious to see how it plays out to be honest, because um, I think if you're listening to shows like Serial, you need to kind of take them at the pace of how the author intends them to. But if you're just listening to uh, like a vocal podcast of of you know maybe a couple friends talking about giraffes or something, you could uh, you might be able to speed it up and that that could be okay. But I I really have to honestly check it out. And one of the best things about Smart Speed, and, and I noticed this, and if anybody has tried Overcast, you will notice this. And I'm going to read this this little paragraph here that uh, from uh, Marco's Arment, again linked in the uh, show note in Marco's article from Marco Arment. He says the biggest reason people cite for not listening to more podcasts is that they don't have the time. My goal with Smart Smart Speed was to directly address that to make more time for people, and it has since Smart Smart Speed time saved totals are synced to Overcast servers, and I can happily report that Smart Speed has cumulatively saved 55 years of listening time so far. I bet that the vast majority of the time saved was subsequently filled with more podcasts. So his argument is, is that while there may be some small sacrifice in certain show types like Serial or This American Life, that by and large, the service he's providing is the opportunity for listeners to hear more, which is what they want. And us as podcast producers and hosts, we want our listeners to be listening to more of our shows. So taking that argument from Marco, what are your thoughts on that, Dave? I well, first off, I think that's crazy that he actually can figure out that he saved what was it fifty five years? Yeah, in the something? application in the settings menu, it will show you a personal number of as you continue to use Smart Speed, this is how much time you saved. Like I think, like I said, I've used it sparingly, but I think in in, in a couple of days I saved like twenty three minutes. Wow, that's that's crazy. Uh, I guess when it comes when it comes down to that. Would I want to listen to more podcasts? Absolutely. I think you had said that you're you're in the 90s for how many you listen to. I think I'm around the 35 range, and like I struggle. Like 
there's some times where, you know, I'll be, I'll be playing video games or, you know, just sitting down for the evening and listening. And it would be kind of cool, especially for the really long podcasts. And when I say long, I'm referring to the ones that are, I think, over an hour and 15 minutes. Because it gets kind of hard for me to, you know, to sit down for two or three hours and listen to a podcast unless, you know, I pause it or go back to something else. So if it could trim, you know, maybe 15 to 20 minutes off that, I'd be, I'd be curious to see what that's like. And maybe, like I said, get to more podcasts. And folks, I think it, the, the, the story here is basically you really need to make your own decision on listening speed. It is uh, a benefit to some. Uh, others may find it, as, as Dave and I have talked about, uh, untenable. Um, but maybe smart speed in the overcast application for iOS is that happy medium that, you know, it saves you the time, which is ultimately what I think anyone's intention on going up in smart, uh, in playback speed would be to, to, g- to get through it quicker. And, and you can make your own decision. Um, and I actually put this question on Twitter a few days ago, and, and it, it generated a lot of conversation. When this Verge article came out, I basically sent it out and said, what does everybody think? And I just want to mention some of the folks here that, that engaged me in that conversation and had some really interesting opinions. People uh, had not heard of it. People who said, oh, not only do I use smart speed, but I use it at 2x. 2x plus smart speed because it's just not enough time in the day and they wanted to get through a bunch more podcasts so uh alisa Paselli from the three geeky ladies podcast chimed in the nothing serious podcast the podcast in the woods adio radio hot butter podcast war machine horse and the player fm account all chimed in on the conversation the other day so just want to give those guys a quick shout out and thank you for kind of bouncing things back and forth and it was one of the reasons i wanted to talk about it with you david that it was uh it was a an interesting conversation and debate on Twitter the other day. You can follow the Podcast Digest at Pod Digest on Twitter if you want to join in these type of conversations. But uh, an interesting thing nonetheless. What did you, out of curiosity, what did the group kind of say? Did did more prefer to listen to it faster or regular speed? They were all over the place. Um, Elisa from Three Geeky Ladies, she's the one who said she does 2x plus smart speed inside Overcast because she's just trying to plow through as many shows as she can. And I don't want to misconstrue who it was, but one of the other ones I mentioned said they literally had never heard of this before, <laughs> and it was really interesting, and they wanted to, to check it out. So I guess that, you know, that could be somebody who had you know, launched the application and never played with that dial in the lower left or lower right-hand corner where it said 1.0x, tapped on it to realize that, oh, look, you can change this. Uh, so, and, and everything sort of ranged in between. Some people sort of said, if you listen, I don't care. Others said, it's crazy to go anything other than what was intended. So really from all those folks I mentioned, the responses were really wide varied. Okay. Definitely a personal preference thing. That's for sure. Well, let's get down to the business at hand folks. And that business in original format, as I'm calling it here with the podcast, I just is to bring you two great show recommendations Uh, that you need to be subscribing to, but because I've asked Dave to co-host with me this week, we're going to bring you four, two each. We've got some great shows that you need to subscribe to, and uh, David and I flipped a coin before the start of this episode, and we decided that I would take the first episode, or the first show, that we want to tell you about that you should be subscribing to, and what's interesting is we were talking about it beforehand, and uh, Dave's not heard of uh, or listened to the two shows that I'll be recommending, and I've not listened to the two shows that he'll be recommending. So hopefully after this, we'll be doing what we're going to be asking you guys to do, which is to go out and check these two out uh, because we do endorse these shows as a listening experience. So let's begin with my first show recommendation. This is one I've had in the hopper for several weeks as I've begun my interview series. I've said to myself once I found this, I said, when I do go back and do some show recommendations, these guys have to be in it. It is called the Breakfast for Dinner Podcast. On Twitter, they are at BFD underscore podcast. Their website, breakfastfordinnerpodcast.tumblr.com. This is hosted by a couple, and it's uh, both Doggo and Nicole, and Longtime listeners of the podcast digest and and I know uh, Dave has uh, also uh, had some conversations with them as well know that I'm a big fan and I've mentioned them many times of Neil and Annalise over at Dark Angels and Pretty Freaks. I can tell you that the very first time I listened to this show before the first episode was done, I actually shot out on Twitter to both Doggo and Nicole from Breakfast for Dinner and I also tagged Neil and Annalise and said, you guys need to get together. 
okay? Because if you're a fan of one or the other, I really think you'll enjoy the other show. It's a very similar format. A lot of pop culture, personal stories, uh, a couple talking back and forth, riffing on things, improv but yet having somewhat of a... Uh, idea and blueprint for each of their shows so i really think that this is something that you know dark angels and pretty freaks and i've told neil and annalise this themselves it works because of the magic and the interaction and the chemistry between the two of them on air the same thing i will say for doggo and nicole it comes through it's a different style right they approach it like because they're different people these guys are down in texas neil and annalise are in california uh but you quickly will end up caring about these folks, their stories, and you will end up looking forward to each of their new episodes. They are about 65 episodes in, mostly a weekly release format. Uh, a side note, if you do go out and try to find this show, Breakfast for Dinner Podcast, check out the episode titles. Okay, so the title of the show is Breakfast for Dinner, right? So obviously they're fans of breakfast, right? So what they decided to do, each of their episode titles are different breakfast food. So cool. Just a, a little neat niggly bit that I have found really interesting. So each new episode that comes out is a new breakfast food. Their sound quality is excellent. It's very easy to listen to. Ironically, I think in the most recent episode, there was a couple little hiccups, but nothing that caused it to be a problem whatsoever. It's clear from looking at their Tumblr page that they provide an exhaustive list of links. They do their background, they, they, you know, their, their legwork. They bring a lot of current event topics. They're big fans of TV and movie. They watch a lot of TV. They talk about it with you. Uh, and it, it, and I don't watch a lot of TV, so it's kind of one way to sort of keep in, in sync with what's going on from there. Probably should mention, as I like to do, this is indeed adult listening. They are adults. It is for adults. So parents, be careful of the through-the-car speaker playing with the kids' presence. Uh, Doggo and Nicole have excellent social media engagement, especially on their Facebook page. Their Facebook page for the show is facebook.com backslash breakfast for dinner podcast. They are sporting over a thousand likes at this point. They regularly shout out to listeners, which I think is a great way of thanking the folks who do listen to the show, choose to engage with them. They got a great rapport with their audience. It's very clear. They feature segments. They've got a lot of great recurring segments like song of the week. And I guess they officially call it guess who, but they call it new game. And, and the sort sort of, Again, similar to how Dark Angels and Pretty Freaks are featuring their top five list, they sort of end every show with what they call the new game, where one of them is quizzing the other with six clues about a celebrity, and they have to guess each one as they go, and it tends to be crazy, some of the guesses that they come up with, and it tends to be a real blast. So that's my first show recommendation this week. It's called Breakfast for Dinner Podcast. It is a uh, couple-hosted podcast. Uh, Dago is on Twitter at T-E-H Dago, D-A-G-O. Nicole is at N-I-C-O-L-A-H-E-A-R-T-S. That's Nicola Hearts, if you will. Check out the host. Check out their Facebook page or Tumblr page. Subscribe to the show. Give it a try just once. I think you will like it. I really do. I've certainly enjoyed it myself. Dave, you haven't heard of Breakfast for Dinner. No, I haven't. And uh, first off, breakfast for dinner as the food is actually my favorite type of dinner. <laughs> and I also love I love podcasts that get creative with the uh, with the titles because you know so many times you can go sc scroll through and it could be like talking about comics, this that. But if if your if your title is kind of like a wicked piece of art and it catches my eye, I'll definitely listen to it. Yeah, but, and th these guys do that. And uh, I I know you're a big fan of Dark Angels and Pretty Feet, as am I. Um, and I would, I would, uh, I would recommend this one to you. I think you'd really enjoy it. They, they, they really sound like a cool couple down in Texas and they, they, it's a different tone. It's a different flair. It's a different angle to the couple show, but I really enjoy it. Well, another thing I love too, is I love the, the couple combination because so many times you get these or podcasts with friends or a couple of groups of people, but the, uh, the husband wife team is probably one of my, my most favorite podcasts because you know, they, you kind of get involved with their lives and, you go through with events that happen and you in a way kind of like fall in love with what they're doing. And I like to, it's almost like a soap opera I'd say where you can keep, you want to keep coming back each week to see who's done what or what's happened. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's our first show recommendation this week. Diamond Dave Meyer, you brought show recommendations as well. Let's hear about your first one. Okay. So when I was choosing these, I decided to go with, uh, cause I'm, I don't, well, I'm fairly new to the podcast scene, but there's, uh, I wanted to go with one podcast I'm completely in love with, 
and then kind of a new show that I've discovered that I think is unique. So the first one I'm going to go with is uh, the Listening Party podcast hosted by Rod and Denise. Uh, why I like this podcast is it's a music conversation podcast where users can submit different songs each week uh, that's based on a theme, and then they will play those songs and talk about them during their show. Uh, they use... Another reason why I like it is they have a great use of sound effects that blend in really well with the show. Like It doesn't kind of saturate it. It makes it more funny and adds to the element of it. Um, they've got some absolute superb editing. editing. The sound is, is really clear. It's crisp. Uh, Rod does a really good job taking care of that. And the hosts are just hilarious. Like They're, they're another um, husband-wife team that you know, riffs back and forth, and they, they talk a little bit up about what's going on, but it's, it's mostly focused on the music. They're coming up on 150 episodes. Which is which is crazy. Like I, I really hope that some of my shows can get to like fifty, but one hundred and fifty that that just blows my mind. Um, I think their current theme uh, this week coming up is uh, strangers. So literally, you would go through and either find stranger in the title or in the lyrics, and you could submit that song. And then basically, they just sit down and talk about it. Uh, pod length usually goes for about just under two hours, but what I like about it is you can throw it on and you're kind of listening to music and getting the hilarity. Uh, combo of talking too, so it really doesn't feel like much time is going by when you listen to them. Uh, you can find them, their main podcast, on Twitter at the LP or yeah, the LP Pod, uh, and then Ron and Denise individually at uh, Denise at PJams923 and Rod at Podhead Rod. What do you think of that? Do you listen to any music podcasts, Sam? I don't, and it's funny because I am a mobile DJ, and you would think I would, and I should. In fact, I know Rod, Podhead Rod, on Twitter. I've engaged with literally hundreds and hundreds of shows, and as you alluded to before, I can't listen to them all. So many of them are sort of queued up, back of my mind, favorited on Twitter, things I'd like to get to. I've been hearing a lot about the Listening Party Pod, you know, from you, and, and there are several, they have a number of fans. There's a lot of people who really espouse this show, and I know they've been getting into the swag, and I've seen a lot of cool uh, stuff that they've been putting out. But Rod has been super supportive. I know he listens to the Podcast Digest, and I, uh, I'm i sure he's going to appreciate those those great words you've just said about them. But it is something on my to-do list, and, and, and from what you're telling me, it sounds like it's uh, a really cool experience. It is. There's there's probably four or five shows uh, that I, I never miss a week, um, and I, I always have to listen to like the day it comes out, and they're, they're among my top two because they're probably one of the – like I said, the the best choice of listening for music and just uh, clarity combo between the two. They're they're fantastic people, and I personally recommend this podcast to anyone who wants to check it out. So you would say it's diamond approved. It's diamond approved. I would say. <laughs> well, that's has historically been more than good enough for me. So it is on my to do list, as I hope it's on yours. You know, uh, folks listening, this is. Uh, what we want to do, we want to expose you guys to something that maybe you haven't heard, maybe in your normal directory searches or scrolling through, you've not come across. You know, as as uh, David mentioned, you know, we've invested a lot of time into these shows in terms of we can tell you what uh, you can expect and if we think that you'll like it. And so these first two shows definitely sound like uh, things that you would in. in isn't it ironic that they were both uh, couples? Uh, couples-based podcast appears to be a good thing. Maybe I need to talk to my wife. <laughs> get her, get her on, Dan. I'd, I'd love to hear a uh, uh, combo with your wife on the show. Yeah, I've broached that subject a time or two. What was funny is that if you've listened back to my previous episode, I talked with Tim Robertson from the Tech Fan Podcast and OWC Radio, and we actually covered the concept of bringing spouses onto the show for you. And and he, you know his position was, you know, don't push them. <laughs> you know, yeah. kind of a, uh, don't make it a uh, do or die type thing and, and that's sort of been my approach you know I have an open standing invitation if she ever feels compelled she's more than welcome but I don't know that she's been on a microphone in any capacity at any time at, at least in a lot of years so I think it would be a big ask absolutely and I think sometimes too for, for new people when they get on the microphone they get really nervous I know I was but it can become a lot of fun, and I really hope she does that. I will keep all of you updated if there's any movement on the uh, <laughs> Mrs. Dan Lizette 
effort to join me on a podcast. But let's move on to my second show recommendation. Our third, our third, first time ever with a third podcast recommendation for you right here on the Podcast Digest. And one of the things I've said, folks, if you've been a long-time listener of this show, you know that I have kind of no alliances, right? I, I definitely have a ton of love for the small-time independent podcast, being one myself, but I will also give a shout-out and recommend uh, even the big ones. If I think that it is worth your time to listen to, then I want to talk about it here on the Podcast Digest, and that's what I'm going to do with my second show recommendation, and this is a special one in the sense that this is one of the first shows that I've actually found and came across based directly on true word of mouth, real life uh, recommendation. So Ken from my office, if you are listening to this, thank you for the great suggestion and at Ken's suggestion, I started listening to a show called No Such Thing as a Fish. It is an extraordinarily crazy name. Okay. Maybe you've heard of this, maybe you haven't. I hadn't. I'd seen it sometimes in iTunes, and uh, I listened to most of my shows on Pocket Cast and their recommended section. The show is found at QI Podcast, their website, qi.com backslash podcast. It is hosted by four folks. I'm going to do a little bit of background, especially for a lot of us North American listeners. You, you may not have heard this. However, if you're in England you probably know exactly what this is. QI stands for quite interesting, or they go by QI for short, a group based out of London. Now, this is actually a huge media conglomerate. They are on BBC uh, America as a television show. They have a show called, I'm just scrolling for it now, uh, let's see here, The uh, it's part of a bigger QI group. Their flagship production is a BBC comedy panel show. This BBC comedy panel shows hosted by Stephen Fry and Alan Davies. Now, there's a couple of names you've probably heard of. They also have a BBC radio show called Museum of Curiosity. They This group publishes books and even curated an online encyclopedia at qi.com backslash info cloud. So what is all of this stuff? Museums, encyclopedias, the whole show is based on a group of facts, right? So for the show, for this online encyclopedia, for this radio show, they basically look for the wildest and craziest facts from history, from current day, things that are absolutely true. And they have researchers on staff that go out and try to find this. Four of those researchers, whom they call elves, the QI elves, host this podcast. And every week while working on the TV or radio show, they come across all these crazy entertaining facts. And at the end of the week, they get together to put out a podcast about the best stuff they found. These folks are Dan, James, Andy, and Anna. Dan is on Twitter at Schreiberland. James is at Egg Shaped. Andy is at Andrew Hunt. Hunterm, and Anna uh, simply is listed in the profiles, hashtag get on Twitter. So apparently Anna's not there. Uh, and all of this will be linked up in the show notes, folks. And these four have a great report. If you are a fan of British comedy in any way, any way, uh, previous or current day, you will love this. First of all, they're all talking with the accent, which I am a huge fan of, the English accent. So right then and there, you've got me to at least listen to the beginning. These facts are outrageous. They're crazy, interesting, mind-blowing, entertaining, all of these things. And then they basically take a fact and they rift back and forth. And uh, it is hilarious. It is a ton of fun. It's even like subliminally educational because obviously they're talking about facts and they're probably things you haven't heard. This is one of these premises for a podcast that's that's really not that easy to explain, and I'm afraid I'm not doing a great job. But as I've said in the past, uh, if you're listening to the Podcast Digest, you're here because you want to find great shows. Hopefully, I'm hoping, over these previous 26, 27 episodes, I've earned a little bit of credit with you guys. And if I have, take my word. Look for no such thing as a fish in your catalog. Check this out. Just like the Laps podcast, who I've talked with Kyle Jess, the creator of that, uh, a few weeks back in an interview, I also recommended his show. No Such Thing as a Fish was also named one of iTunes' best of 2014. I'm pretty confident that if iTunes has bestowed this award on the show, it's worth your time. They've also been nominated for several other creative-based awards in, in England itself. It is a top quality, highly produced, awesome show. Give it a shot, especially if you like British comedy, trivia, facts, uh, any of those type of things, 
I guarantee you that you'll love this one. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Dave, you said you hadn't heard of this one either. What do you think from my description of it? I'm, I'm intrigued. So can you think of maybe uh, an example or a fact off the top of your head that they kind of went on? Oh, let's see here. They talked about, uh, a couple weeks ago in an episode, they talked about, uh, they were talking about time zones. And actually, they were talking about America that on a 35-mile bus, bus route in West Virginia back in the 50s or 60s, that you could actually pass through seven time zones. <laughs> and uh, and they were talking about how, uh, you know, 50, 60 years ago, as sort of time zones were getting uh, all established, that there was l uh, local ability to sort of determine which time zone you were part of. I'm not sure if you're familiar. There's still parts of, I believe, in Arizona, the boot tip of Indiana. There is like, you know, self-choice on which time zone they were part of. It was east or central, central or mountain. They kind of in the lines get weird. Well, back then it was even less regulated. So they talked about a 35-mile route, a bus route or train route, I think it was actually, uh, inside uh, West Virginia that you could actually cross seven different time zones, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It was a really interesting story. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of all British media. Like, for instance, usually I don't watch any any television because I just feel like most television now is is boring. But I really find that Britain has a really high standard of giving you these different mediums. So I, I will definitely check out that show because, first off, like you, I, I love accents. If I could move to Britain, I definitely would. Um, and I like hearing people talk about facts. It's fun to learn different things. And if they put a hilarious aspect on it, it... It should be quite entertaining. Yeah, and let me just be clear. This is not an educational podcast. This is not like you're sitting in a classroom. This is primarily a comedy show. Uh, you just happen to learn some things along the way. Uh, no such thing as a fish, uh, fish. Great show. Thanks again to Ken from The Office for recommending it. I enjoyed it. It has quickly bubbled up to the top of my, ooh, there's a new episode. One just dropped today. I haven't gotten to it yet. And uh, time to listen to it. So uh, that's my second show recommendation. Diamond Dave, what's yours? Okay, so as I mentioned, I wanted to go with a, a newer pod that I just discovered, and I, I really don't remember how I came to interact with him. I think somebody had retweeted him on a feature Friday, and I think I just kind of found him, downloaded it, and gave it a shot. But I want to talk about The Kitchen Counter. Uh, that's on Twitter at TKC Podcast, and it's hosted by Roger. Um, and as the name suggests, this is a podcast about food. So being being a single guy, uh, getting into my thirties, I'll be honest, I can't I can't cook. I mean, I've I can do some basic stuff to keep myself alive, but when it comes to like how to properly season a steak or learning about different ingredients in the kitchen, I'm I'm completely oblivious. Now, what Roger does is he takes different themes every week, um, like for instance, uh, how to cook, uh, like I said, steak, or he even explains how to make an easy vinaigrette. And he combines them all down to really short, simple episodes. And what, one of the main things I like about this podcast is they're only usually five to ten minutes long. And that's really easy, easy listening, especially when you're trying to get, get something across. Uh, no longer than usually 30 minutes, but he takes the whole podcast and breaks down his topic and really simplifies how to cook something or the differences in spices. Um, he also does like keys to successful cooking, but... It's, it's such an amazing, simple podcast for anybody who wants to learn anything in the kitchen. Uh, a couple of cool things that I discovered about him is uh, he kind of got me to partake in some of these things. Like he posted something about making egg muffins. And I went to his website, found the recipe, and I'm going to try it out because it looks really simple. It's really easily explained. And uh, the last thing that I like about him too is um, for the social media aspect, Neil from Dark Angels Pretty Freaks one of the last episodes that they talked about making the ultimate uh, cheese sandwich, grilled cheese. And I think he called it Jesus for Jesus. And Roger actually listening to what Neil said he was going to make it for so that he would do an episode on creating the sandwich. So it's kind of cool that he can take even user suggestions on stuff like that and create a podcast from it. Um, I think I tweeted at him that I'd love to see him throw out an episode on a couple of easy dishes for even simple things like the average guy who can't cook to make, and he said he'd be more than happy to oblige. So that is my last recommendation, The Kitchen Counter. What do you think of that, Dan? 
man, I wish it was, or I wish it was around, or wish I had found it when I was single. And in fact, when I was single, I, I really wasn't, I don't even know what podcasts were invented at that point. But uh, let's put it this way. My mother used to tell me that good thing I got married because if I hadn't, she was scared I would start to starve to death. I'm like <laughs> you, Dave. I cannot cook at all. And if I hadn't gotten married, one, I'd probably be 50 pounds lighter and uh, also be uh, scavenging for food every single day. So the fact that Roger's out there putting out a show that a single guy could actually tune into and uh, get some help feeding himself, it's a great, that's a great reference. That's a great resource for folks. Yeah. And it's, like I said, it's not complicated. It's, it's very simple. And that, that I think is the key to learning something is he breaks it down very easily and he really teaches you like how to make an awesome dish. That's cool. And he is also another one wildly engaged in social media. Again, another one that I follow, another one that I'm familiar with in the, in, in the Twitter space, uh, but just have not. And you know, what's funny kind of put a nice big bow on this Dave we were talking about my wife joining before when he started interacting with me and my show uh I saw his uh, description I you know I checked out the show in terms of went to the website and looked at it and because I have no skills whatsoever in it and folks I will admit wholly dependent upon my wife to make sure I survive uh, I told my wife I said hey look here's a show based on you know kitchen stuff and cooking I said, why don't you start listening to it, and then maybe you could come on and talk about it. It was actually ironic that these two things tie together, and um, I told her about it. I sent it to her. Honestly, as we talked about, I don't want to press her, but uh, I have come across this show before, and I'm uh, glad to hear it's a top-quality thing, Diamond Approved. Yeah, and as before, this is Diamond Approved, and as kind of something special for my review segment this week, I'm going to write a written review on Roger but I'm also going to take that breakfast muffin recipe and I'm going to include that in the review to show people how simple it is to make something. Oh, pictures of your uh, end result as well, Dave? Yeah, now I'm hoping this turns out okay because usually when I when I bake stuff, not, not so much as cooking, but baking, it usually ends up black, even if it's supposed to go in the oven for five minutes. So we'll, we'll see how this turns out. You might have to apply some Instagram filters to your picture and make it look, go black and white. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, because even black and white for a burnt crust will look good. Yeah, nobody would know the difference. <laughs> so this is a breakfast muffin you're cooking? Yeah, uh, I apologize. I don't have the recipe in front of me, but essentially he gives you a really easy way within 20 minutes to create a like a breakfast muffin using mm. just a, a muffin tin and like literally a handful of ingredients. And he says that it cooks really easily. You can add anything you want from even just you know, cheese and bacon to fruits or, or vegetables, sorry, and just go from there. So I'm, I'm really, I really want to try this out. You know, it's interesting. We may really be performing a community service here, Dave. I recommended the breakfast for dinner podcast, and <laughs> you're about to cook a breakfast muffin from Roger. There's, there's some unification here that, that probably should be happening. Absolutely. And like I said, any, any type of food or learning about things involving food, I'm, I'm totally down for it, but it's, it's just hard because unless you, you know, you have somebody that can show you, or I guess I could watch YouTube videos, but you know, with all the podcasting, who has time for that, right? All right. So I'd, I'd rather learn from it from another podcaster. And like I said, definitely check this guy out. He's got a lot of great stuff. And as mentioned before, he's down and approved. Perfect. Well, folks, those are four great podcasts. Uh, that both Diamond Dave and myself suggest that you go out there and find, subscribe, listen to, give it a shot, and let them know. You know, if you do go to their show and you subscribe and you listen to it and you like it, shoot them a quick message, shoot them a quick email, like their page on Facebook, let them know, hey, I found you through uh, through uh, Dan Lizette at Podcast Digest and through Diamond Dave from Cool Story Show and Podcast Without Borders. They talked about you. That's how I found you, and I want to let you know I love what you're doing. They would really appreciate it, I'm sure, and uh, that's what we're here to do. So before we go this week, Dave, tell all the folks who, for some reason, after our conversation, uh, we're almost uh, five or six episodes back where we talked to you and Andy from Cool Story Show, if they've not gone and found what you're doing uh, between your podcast efforts and your web, and in fact, you've got some new efforts I've alluded to since the last time we talked, tell everybody where they can find all the great stuff you're putting together. Okay. Uh, first story, or first podcast is the Cool Story Show featuring myself and three of my close friends. We get together each week and talk about a uh, random topic of intro, uh, interest that week. Um, you can find that at the Cool Story Show 
um, or thecoolstoryshow.com. My second show, which is a brand new show, just launched this week, is called Podcast Without Borders. And what it is, is it's a conversational podcast featuring myself and co-host uh, Aaron from The Cool Story Show. And we decided to go a route where we would either talk to podcasters or just random people, because we love podcasting and we love talking to people. The, the first episode just launched this week with the guys over at Snake Oil Comics. Um, and you can find that uh, at Podcast Without Borders, or sorry, on the tweets, it's No Borders, no Borders Pod, and at The Cool Story Show once again. Uh, thank you very much, Dan, for having me on. This, is, this has been really great. Well, I think so, too, and this is the first time I've had a co-host on the Podcast Digest, and as I mentioned before, when it came to the idea of recommending great podcasts, uh, folks, seriously, check out thecoolstoryshow.com. There is the the, right? Am I saying that right, Dave? Yeah. Thecoolstoryshow.com. Check out their website, and, I mean, they have a ton of great content. They're in the video game, they're in the podcast game, but they're also in the podcast written review game. Dave's offering all uh, authoring all of that stuff. Click on that tab on their website, and he's up to, I don't know, what are you, 7, 8, 9, 10, somewhere in there, show recommendations? Yeah, about that. So, I'm, yeah, once a week it comes out. So that's the source to find not only a bunch more great shows, but also stay tuned to it, bookmark it, or it may possibly be out already to see the results of Dave's baking efforts. <laughs> so check that out as well. Folks, I want to thank you for listening to the Podcast Digest again. I hope that you've enjoyed this. I hope that you've enjoyed this return to the original format, recommending shows and having a great conversation in the podcasting world. I would really appreciate it if you rate and review the show on iTunes, on Stitcher, any place that you're able to say uh, if you're happy, if you're satisfied, if you enjoy listening to what we're putting out here each and every week on the Podcast Digest. should only take you 90 seconds, at least in the iTunes world, and I would greatly appreciate it. Diamond Dave Meyer from Cool Story Show and Podcast Without Borders and all the great work that they're doing over there. Thank you again, Dave, for joining me this week. Thank you for having me. And folks, my name's Dan Lizette from the Podcast Digest, and I will talk to you again next week. Thank you for listening to the Podcast Digest. You can follow the show on Twitter at PodDigest. Like the show on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the Podcast Digest. Email the show feedback at thepodcastdigest at gmail.com and you can find all the previous episodes and exclusive blog entries at the show's website, thepodcastdigest.info. 